Hey everyone, thank you for watching today's video. I'm so excited to do. It is going to be another one in my beauty battle series, okay? So this is an older series on my channel that I did recently bring back. I have one that I did a couple weeks ago. I can link that up in the cards. But it's basically where I take it two products that are really, really similar to each other, two products that I really enjoy, and I discuss which one I think is the winner between the two of them. It's just a beauty battle. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, I am excited to jump into a new beauty battle. I got so many requests on the first video that I did when I brought back this series. I did this maybe like three or four years ago, and I'm not sure how I got the idea to bring it back again, but I'm excited. You seem excited for it. I went through all of your comments to see which products you want to see head to head. I already have quite a list going for the next video with, a, with some products that I'm trying out just a little bit more before I can put them head to head but I'm excited for this one. I am excited. Let's do the Vegas OOTD first. So today I just have on this dress. It's a pretty long dress. It has a slit on one side and then it has like this little like kind of like cut out detail here. I got it at, I believe it's a shop called Lilyful, which is in the Miracle Mile shops, but I don't know. It kind of makes me feel a little mermaid-esque. I don't know where I'm gonna wear this to yet. I haven't I haven't like worn it out yet, but I think that it's really pretty. So I really like the color and everything. So that's what we're wearing today. I did film this makeup look for my Instagram. Actually, I did an Instagram live today, so I can link the IGTV down below if you'd want to see. Otherwise, I do always link all of my makeup. So let's start off with what I think we're all here for, right? So you guys can watch this part and you can click off the video and it'll be great. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. When I did my last, was it the last beauty battle or just another video that I mentioned that I actually wanted to put three products head to head to head. And when I tell you the amount of comments I got on that, I was like, I have to do this video ASAP. So for this category, we're talking lip liners. And we have lip liners from Charlotte Tilbury, Natasha Denona and Pat McGrath. There's a running joke on my YouTube channel that I am friends with all three of these ladies. Sometimes people think I'm being serious, which really gives me a good chuckle. Uh, I am not, but it's funny to imagine that I am, especially as I put them all head to head to head for this video. Like so many of you said, there's gonna be a lot of girls' nights that are gonna be very awkward now because of this. Okay, so these lip liners, I like all three of them. I think all three of them are great. I wear all three of them all of the time. For Charlotte Tilbury, I do have multiple shades. The one that I've pulled out here is in Pillow Talk, a very classic Charlotte Tilbury shade. I first bought either Pillow Talk or Very Victoria. I think I bought Very Victoria first, but I have bought multiple Charlotte Tilbury lip liners, and then I did get a few in PR, but for the most part, I have bought them. Natasha Denona, I have uh, the shade Dana. I always mix up Dana and Noah. I have Dana bought it myself and then pat mcgrath i have contour once again bought it myself pretty even playing field here <laughs> right here is swatches so we have charlotte tilbury pillow talk natasha denona dana and then pat mcgrath contour i feel like these lip liners are so similar i i just they are so it's why i like all of them it's why i wear all of them I think that they are very, very similar. They're very smooth, they're very creamy, they're very easy to apply, and they're all very long wearing. I don't think that you can go wrong with any of these lip liners. For the pricing on these, uh, Charlotte and Natasha are both going to be $22. Pat McGrath is going to be $28. So that one, that's, that, that is a little bit more expensive. When I tell you that I, I, w I stayed up at night thinking about this. I just didn't know what to do. I was losing sleep. I couldn't eat. I could barely function thinking of who I was going to make the winner out of these. Because again, like I said, they're all, they're just, they're so similar to each other. You really can't go wrong with any of these lip liners. But if I have to choose one, which I do, because that's the point of this video. If I have to choose one out of these three, the winner is going to be Charlotte Tilbury. The reason why I decided to pick Charlotte Tilbury as the winner is because this lip liner is redonkulously long wearing. When, like, I just swatched these, when I go to remove them, everyone's gonna put up a fight, don't get me wrong. Like, Charlotte and Pat, or I'm sorry, Pat and Natasha. <laughs> Pat and Natasha, they are going to, like, want to stick around. Charlotte's not going to leave. You know, sometimes she does that at girls' night. Sometimes I'm like kicking Charlotte out the door. I'm like, okay, it's time to go. And she's like, how about another glass of wine, darling? And I'm like, no, Charlotte, 
Like I need to go to sleep, okay? So that's exactly how, how her lip liners are though. They are not going to move. Like when I remove them at night, I really, usually if I take like my cleansing oil, I just kind of rub over my lips and like boom, it's gone. With the Charlotte, I really have to like massage it into my lips because otherwise I'll get done removing my makeup and I'll look in the mirror and you can still see like a faint tinge of lip liner. I personally love that. Maybe you don't love that, but when it comes to like lip products and especially my lip liner, I want that to stay. I want that to stay all night long. So that is why I chose the Charlotte is because even though the formulas I think are so similar and I love them all, the staying powder power is just a, just a little smidgy smidge better on the Charlotte Tilbury. I hope I didn't just cause friction between me and Pat and Natasha, but it had to be done. It had to be done. Next up, this is a very, this was a very cutthroat beauty battle that we have going on here. <laughs> why me? Why, why, why? Next up, this is a really cutthroat beauty battle. So many of you requested to see these two palettes against each other. We have from Sigma, their new ambiance palette. From Patrick Ta, the new Major Dimension palette. I enjoy both of these. I think, were these both? I think in my last two makeup monthlies or where I rank all of the makeup I've been trying, I think this went in the top spot for May and this went in the top spot for June. I just finished filming my makeup monthly for June. It's the video that went up before that. So sorry, spoiler alert for the number one product. But I, I love both of these palettes. I think that they're fantastic. So the Sigma Ambiance came out first. This retails for $49 on the Sigma website. I did get this sent to me and I am an affiliate with Sigma. My discount code is Samantha. Um, so you have 14 shadows in here and it does also come with a double-ended brush. I love the Sigma brushes. I highly recommend them. I love that their palettes come with them. Uh, it does have a mirror. Again, retails for $49. Typically you can use a discount code on the Sigma website though. The Patrick Ta I did purchase recently from Sephora, this one. One, two, three, four, five, six. This one has 12 shades. It does also have a mirror. Doesn't come with a brush, and this one retails for $68. You have a mixture of matte and shimmers, and then there are also two cream shadows here. Mixture of matte, shimmers, um, more like topper type shades in the Sigma palette. When I tell you I've lost sleep over this beauty battle video, it's just like, what? I just, I had such a hard time. I had such a hard time with this one because there's so many pros to each one. And I, I was trying so hard to like weigh them differently. So like I said, I got the Sigma one first. It's so easy to use. I love the Sigma eyeshadow formula. I just, I've been loving their formula on their eyeshadow palettes for such a long time. The ambiance is just no difference. When I got this, I was like, this is going to be my summer palette. I absolutely love it. I think that it's stunning. It's so easy to use. I've used every single shade out of here. It's just beautiful and easy to work with. I was a little bit hesitant to purchase the Patrick Todd just because the price tag is so expensive and I was like, especially with having the ambiance, I was like, am I really going to use it all that much? It's absolutely beautiful. The mattes are so easy to work with. The shimmers, I just use my fingers for them. The cream shadows, I use my fingers for them. I love the addition to the creams. I think that you can really get a lot of looks out of each palette. I think that there's a lot, like when you look at it, you might think like, oh, this is just neutral and warm and you're just getting the same looks. But I really think that you can do a lot with both of them. There's different tones, undertones to all of the shadows in here. So you can really switch up the looks. Like you're not just going to get the same thing from these palettes. Ah, this honestly, like as I, like, I, I knew what I was going to say, but then as I'm sitting down, I'm like, I just, I don't know. Is it? I just, okay. Ah, now see, oh, oh, now I don't know. Now I'm running through my pros and cons again. Okay, I'm gonna stick with my original decision. I'm gonna stick with my original decision, and that is to say that I think the winner is going to be the Sigma Beauty. Let me tell you why. These, both these palettes are awesome. I highly recommend both of them. But if you are telling me this is a color scheme that you want, but you only want to purchase one of these because 49 and 68, both of that is really expensive, what I'm going to tell you, and the reason why I wanted to bring back the beauty battle, because I often get those questions. Hey, you love both of these products. I can only buy one. Which one do you think it should be? The reason why I'm recommending the Sigma 
is mainly because of the price difference you also get a brush and the brush is really freaking good like i i always get excited about the sigma palettes when they come with the brushes because i'm going to use them there's other eyeshadow palettes that come with brushes i just throw them away like they're just they're not good quality it's actual sigma quality brushes that you're getting in here so the value that you are getting for the 49 dollars i think is more than the value that you are getting in the patrick ta that is the biggest, like, that's really the only thing that I could think of to put the Sigma one over it. If you're only going to be purchasing one of them, I think the Sigma is a great way to go. It's a great formula. It's going to be so easy to use. You're going to get two more shadows in here, plus a double-ended brush, so two brushes. Like, I mean, I just, I think that is so, so fabulous. Again, $49. You can use a discount code. You can use mine. You can use your favorite influencer. Sigma also often runs deals on their website. So that I think is fantastic. But you really also can't go wrong with the Patrick Todd. Yes, you're going to spend a little bit more money. Yes, you're not going to get as many shadows. But you do have the addition of the cream shadows. That's why at one point I was kind of leaning towards Patrick Todd because I was like, you just get so many different finishes in here. But on the flip side, you also do in the Sigma, you just don't get cream shadows in this one. You still get mattes, you still get shimmers, you still get topper shades, you still get like the really like glittery shiny shades, same as in the Patrick Ta. Both formulas, I don't think that you can go wrong with. I think both of these palettes are so, so great. Just price wise, if you're really only going for one, I would say the Sigma Beauty, you're going to get a little bit more value in, but that you can't go wrong with the Patrick Ta either. <laughs> I have two foundations that I really wanted to battle against each other. I have a few other foundations written down. Some are a little bit newer, some are some newer skin tints that I just wanted to test out a little bit more. And especially when I do a beauty battle, I kind of like to wear both those products really consistently beforehand to kind of really get like the, the battle going. So I will have some skin tints coming in the next video, but of course leave any of your um, recommendations, suggestions that you want to see for the next one down below. But for this one, I wanted to do the oldie, oldie but a favorite, oldie but a goodie, the Pat McGrath Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Foundation against the Dior Forever Skin Glow. So I talked about the Dior recently in my most recent regrets video, products that I regret forgetting about. And I mentioned the Dior that I found this one after my move and I was like, wait, I haven't worn that in a while. And I've been wearing it obsessively the last couple of weeks here it is so so beautiful but then the other day i pulled out the pat mcgrath and if you have been around my channel for a while deep obsession with the pat mcgrath deep deep obsession with the pat mcgrath foundation also and to me these are very very similar they are both very lightweight they are both very liquidy foundations they give a more of like a light to medium coverage the dior i would say is a little bit more medium the pat mcgrath is a little bit more on that light medium side but you can build it up both give a more natural finish that leans a little bit more on the glowy side i do have dry skin but both of them kind of lean a little bit more that way versus leaning matte uh, and they both, I think they both have a great wear time to them. Um, both of them do also have a pump. For the shades in the Dior, I wear 2.5N, and for the Pat McGrath, I wear uh, shade 10. So the Pat McGrath retails for $68, which is very, very expensive. In here, you do get 1.18 fluid ounces. The Dior retails for $52, still very expensive, and you get one fluid ounce. So just a little bit more product with the Pat McGrath. This was another hard one. I did it to myself. I'm the one that came up with this particular beauty, ba beauty battle. So I did this one to myself. And I really went back and forth and I was wearing the Dior a bunch and then I wanted to wear the Pat McGrath a bunch and I was like, which, uh, uh, which one is it going to be? Because I really like both of them. Again, I like to have these be products that I do really enjoy um, because it kind of just makes it a little bit harder, like up, ups the ante a little bit, if you will. Uh, I do, I wanted to say the Dior does have SPF 35, Pat McGrath does not. Some people like SPF in the foundation, some people do not. So I did want to mention that. The winner out of this beauty battle, and it was hard and it was close, but I have to give it to the oldie but the goodie. So hopefully Pat isn't going to be too mad at me after this video because I am going to go ahead and choose her foundation. The reason why I'm choosing this foundation, one, I like the finish just just like a tad bit more. It's just a little bit more on the natural side than the Dior. I do have more dry skin, so I do like when my foundations lean a little bit more on that glowy side. Sometimes with the Dior, I would say 
I just maybe have to powder a little bit more when I wear it versus with the Pat McGrath I feel like once I put this on and I set it I'm pretty much good to go it's very natural um, it blends into the skin so nicely it doesn't look like I'm wearing a lot of makeup uh, again a lot of those same with the Dior it's really beautiful on the skin I just get a a slight bit more glowy so if that's something that you like you might like the Dior a little bit more but as always this is my channel it's my beauty battle so I kind of gotta say what I prefer and for me that's just like that's the little bit that gave it a win I once again I went back to the pricing because I was like 68 versus 52 I mean both of those that's really high for both of them Again, with the Pat McGrath, you do get a little bit more. I would also say with the Pat McGrath, it's just slightly more liquidy, li liquidier, liquidier. <laughs> and so I feel like I need to use less product with the Pat, so I feel like it could even last me a little bit longer. So I don't know, that's why I decided to go with it that way. I almost lean Dior simply because of pricing, but I just, I like the Pat just a, just a little, little bit more. So if you are looking to you know spend a few extra dollars on a high-end foundation and you're wondering which one would be worth it honestly i've been rec recommending the pat mcgrath for such a long time it's just such a beautiful foundation all right lastly this beauty battle was extremely requested in my last video i still have people messaging me on instagram saying will you please put these two products in a beauty battle and i went back and forth because i do like both products but to me there was a pretty clear winner uh, and like I said, I kind of like the beauty battles to be really close to one another so you can like really see the pain in my face when I make these. Uh, I feel like that's just fun for everybody. And also, I do not have one of the products, which I feel like kind of shows that there is a winner. I don't remember leaving this behind in my move, but apparently I, I have not been able to find it. I've been searching all week for it. I've looked in all of the boxes, all of the bags, all of the everywhere. I can't imagine that I would have... Like, did I declare... I don't think I would have, but apparently it did not make the move with me. So that's why I wanted to put this at the end of the video, but I still wanted to include it because it was so, so requested. And that was to do with the Auric Glow Lust versus the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. So these are very, very similar products. When Sam Ravindahl released her Auric brand and she showed the Glow Lust, I mean, immediately people were comparing it to Charlotte Tilbury and her Flawless Filter. What was funny was I got the Flawless Filter uh, in PR like two weeks or something before the auric came out I had never tried it beforehand so when people are saying like could you try the auric and let us know if it's a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury I was like I don't know I've never tried the Charlotte Tilbury so that was, I was like what and then it showed up like right before the auric PR did I was like well that was really weird so I started trying both of the products kind of wearing them almost simultaneously like one after you know one one day one the next day and to me there really was a clear winner between these two and obviously it's the one that I'm holding the one that made the move with me not only did this make the move with me the other two shades that were sent to me in PR they all made the move with me and the reason why I lean towards the Auric which has a pump the Charlotte Tilbury does have um, a doe fit applicator I do like the pump a little bit more uh, and I do I, I have a video on Auric and I do compare them in there too so I'm gonna go ahead and link that one in the cards and maybe that will help like seeing the actual products against each other also but I do like the pump more than the doe foot another reason why I like the Auric over the Charlotte Tilbury which I believe I have the shade 3 is the product first of all pulled a little bit orange on me so I didn't love the shade but also it has more of a metallic finish to it it has almost this more kind of shiny finish which the the glow lust from auric just kind of gives you a glow like I, I i'm not really i'm not too sure what else i could say like it's just a more glowy product it's not super shimmery it's not glittery it just gives this kind of like fresh healthy more natural glow i didn't feel like the charlotte tilbury was as natural as the auric so that's why i kept going to it because i'll wear the glow lust as a primer i'll wear it underneath i'll mix it in with foundations i'll wear it just as a highlight there's a lot of different ways that you can wear this product and again like it's just natural it just gives you that subtle glow that is really really beautiful again with the charlotte tilbury it just kind of pulled a little bit strange a little bit too metallic a little too shiny the shade was a little bit too orange for me there it was just when i started trying it i was like i just don't really feel super confident wearing this so that is why i would lean towards the auric and in this beauty battle 
that this one would be my winner. The pricing is very similar on these. Charlotte Tilbury is $44 for one fluid ounce. The Auric is 45 and you do get 1.18 fluid ounces. This is the shade Morganite that I did. I mostly use Morganite or Selenite. Those are the two shades that I kind of go back and forth between from Auric, but I think this is such a beautiful product. I know there is a restock coming. I think Morganite was it? No, I can't remember. So Morganite that got um, tweaked a little bit shade wise. Um, but I think, I think these are such a great product. Again, I usually like to be able to recommend both products that I have in the beauty battle and the flawless filter while I get it. And to me, it was a product that I didn't really have anything else like that. But now that there is the Auric, I just think it's going to be a little bit better personally. Charlotte can't be too mad at me. I picked her lip liner. Like, okay, like, if anyone's mad at me, it's Natasha in this case. And man, I have never, I cannot get Natasha, well, I cannot get Natasha Denona's eye for PR. Her PR team is ignoring me. Natasha herself doesn't ignore me, just her PR team. And now I'm probably never going to get on that list. But I do. I think the Auric Lowless is just a better product, personally, in my opinion. I know it's a dollar more, but you do get a little bit more product in there. It's probably going to last you a really long time. And if you just want that glowy, natural look, that is definitely what I would recommend. So I still wanted to include that in there. My apologies that I do not have the other product with me, but I hope that you still found my commentary helpful at least. But I wanted to include it because it was so requested. Again, please leave any of your other requests down below. I wanna do the beauty battle maybe at least like once a month or so, because I think that they could be really fun videos. So yeah, definitely let me know. But other than that, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed this edition of my beauty battle series. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. I hope you also consider subscribing before you go, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.